So the heavens and the earth were completed along with their entire array. God completed on the seventh day his work that he made, and he ceased on the seventh day from all his work that he made. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, for on it he ceased from all his work that God created for the purpose of preparing. Well, good morning, everybody. I, um, I'm enjoying some completed work. And uh, one of the completed works is this cup of coffee. But another one is I'm sitting under a, a simple structure that I made um, for the family and uh, and anyone and visitors and whatever. So I had posted a couple things, a picture of a pergola that I put together. Is the front of our house is south facing. We have no trees. Um, if you leave the house, you are under uh, under the sun. And I've always wanted a structure or something to provide some shade and shelter. And so I did that. And then uh, I thought, would it be nice to provide some protection from the rain? And uh, so the other uh, couple days ago, I put a, a corrugated uh, roof on it. So a place to gather in different types of weather. Is it finished? No. It is not finished. Um, but each phase is its own progression. And uh, it reminded me of uh, John 19.30. When uh, Jesus, our Savior, the high priest, the Melchizedek priest, the priest that came to conclude the Levitical priesthood that was dividing the nations, regather Israel because he said that I come but for the lost tribes of Israel and uh, to um, ratify the covenant made with Abraham. Abraham, of course, being before any tribes existed, he was a man who crossed over from a Gentile system and he became a Hebrew, which is nothing to do with um, any specific tribe. It literally means crossing over. So, for instance, when you're not a Christian and you change your, you repent, okay? You repent of what you believe and even you repent of some of your behaviors. Uh, it's all part of the process of changing your faithfulness to the system you had to the faithfulness of the Son of God. So when you when you repent, you change your mind, you have some regret. It's a, it's a very spherical uh, experience when you see the truth because you know you've seen it. Um, and that is that you're a sinner. I'm a sinner, and that is that there is an answer. There is a blessing that we've been given, especially in these times. Uh, before Yeshua came, um, the blessing was still repentance and faith and faithfulness, but the representation was just wasn't there. There was a silent period with Yahweh. There was a matter of being a stranger, and then you know your converting would have included um, the local. Levite priest and you know uh, all that kind of stuff I mean in your heart there's always a circumcision but then you know there was customs and stuff now looking back at the cross we can repent from the things we used to believe and even feel bad for the ways we used to act and uh, turn to the promises made by Yeshua in that one big promise is, I come to gather you. Um, and uh, I am the son of Yahweh. And uh, I am, before Abraham was, I am. Um, no one gets to the Father but through me. 
Um, many of those are all promises that he made. And um, by when you when you say, I support that message, I pledge my faithfulness to that message, you transition from a walk of death in Babylon to a walk of life in covenant. And part of that covenant is um, abstaining from certain things and participating in certain things. There's, uh, there's a process in the same way that when you're married to someone, you take vows. Why would you not? You want to make a public proclamation that you have no longer interest in another person. You are now bound by this, bound by God's laws with this person. The marriage ceremonies, you know, in the past um, were very uh, public and uh, very um, um, ceremonial and legal because a lot of it had to do with land and inheritance and and everything else. So in the same way, when you transition from um, the not following Jesus or Yeshua to following Jesus or Yeshua, that is the beginning of your relationship. Um, it's not done when you do that. You don't walk down the aisle holding hands with your wife, leaving the church and say, it's all done. We're, we are perfectly unified. I've been married for 24 years. You're never perfectly unified because you both have independent thinking. Well, thankfully our father um, has accommodated this and provided a handbook. And we talked a little bit about a handbook, how um, if you wanted to become an electrician, you have several handbooks. There's a volume. And um, there's, because there's different types of, of uh, connections, different types of formulas, different types of methods of installation and stuff like that. And it's all part of what's called a code. And the same for plumbing and carpentry any kind of building, there is a code involved. So we have a code with Yahweh. Yahweh has a code for those who want to be in covenant with him. So you place your faith in Jesus, that's fine. Now you're a child of God, by grace, through faith, etc. Um, is it finished? No, it's not finished. When Yeshua said in John 19.30, he had received the vinegar, he said, it has been getting finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And um, that was his job as he prepared the way to bring the lost tribes of Israel back into covenant with Yahweh, back into the promises of Abraham. As Abraham observed the days, the appointed times, he observed the Sabbath. He observed um, all things in promise, because he was not a Jew. And he was also under grace, in favor. Because grace in those uh, in the Old Testament, the word is chem, and chem means favor. And depending on the context, it could mean merited favor. It could mean unmerited favor, but never did. In the, in the Torah and the Tanakh, it never means unmerited. It just means favor. Could be in good standing with, loving kindness. But typically, in the Torah and Tanakh, as they were, you know, the first use of that term was with uh, Noah. And Noah was in favor with Yahweh because he was obedient. So in Genesis um, 6, he was, they, you know, Noah was called out and... Uh, making an ark there. Stick your page up. God remembered Noah. So, God was going to destroy everything, or He did destroy everything. 
And he had every legal right to destroy everything. But one man found favor. Wow. Uh, Genesis 6, chapter 8. But Noah found favor in Adonai's eyes. That word is grace. So Noah found favor in his eyes because compared to the um, rest of the sons of God and all the people, and Adonai saw the wickedness of humankind was great on the earth, and every inclination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil all the time. So Adonai regretted. He repented. It's just simply changed mind. He regretted he had made humankind and... His heart was deeply pained. So Adonai says, I will wipe out humankind whom I have created from the face of the ground, from humankind to livestock, crawling things, flying creatures, because I regret. But Noah found favor. So he says to Noah, he gave him a covenant. A covenant is agreement, right? To do or not do certain things. And what did Noah do in chapter 6, verse 22? Noah did according to all that God commanded him. He did so exactly, and he was delivered. So the commandments of Yahweh are given for protection. There is no commandment uh, from our Father that would put us in uh, jeopardy. It is designed for us to be able to be protected and provided for, and even have a slight, like a through a keyhole glimpse of the idea and mind of the Father. Because remember, we're made in His image. We have a spirit, we have um, desires, we have uh, strengths and intuition, and He wants to use those things for greater good. So it is not finished for us. If we are in covenant, if you are seeking to follow the commandments of the Creator by the strength that he's given us and he's blessed us with the spirit then the decisions that you make enable you to grow into him so don't don't stop in the middle of the race Yeshua ran the whole race he said it is finished his job was done that's not your job you're not up on a cross, so your job is not done. You're not being poured out for a drink offering, so your job is not done. You are not being decapitated in prison, so your job is not done. You're not being stoned in the street by Pharisees as you call out their history, so your job is not done. You are a living, breathing, walking, talking um, soul who is trying to grow in the knowledge and favor of Yahweh. Or you're watching this and saying, that's ridiculous, grace and law cannot be combined, and I just say, I believe in Jesus and go on about my business. Growing in knowledge and favor or denying the word. The word of Yahweh is left of Matthew. Yeshua walked out himself. If he was, you know, I am the word and the truth and the light, right? He walked out the Torah with power and he said that we can do the same, right? So on this Sabbath day, the seventh day. Let's remember to number our days and seek to walk in the covenant that we pledged ourselves to. You pledged your faithfulness when you said, I believe in Jesus. You pledged your faithfulness to the Son of God. There is no other thing that you did. You took a vow to walk by faithfulness in the Son of God. The Son of God walked by faithfulness in the Father. So let us endeavor to persevere and keep building projects and building our relationship with the Father and sharing it with others 
so that they might do the same. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one.